The launch of Ableton Live 11 is just around the corner, February 23rd, 2021. And I have been testing out the new Ableton 11 beta, exploring some of the new features. And today I want to discuss whether it's going to be worth the upgrade. Now, back in the summer of 2020, I did a video comparing Ableton Live 10 to Logic Pro X, two fantastic digital audio workstations, both with slightly different feature sets to complement different use cases. A lot of the things that I felt were missing inside of Ableton Live 10, having transferred over from Logic Pro X as my previous digital audio workstation of choice, to my surprise, they're all basically going to be ticked off and exist in Ableton Live 11, plus some brand new features that I never expected to see. So let's take a look at an interface comparison between Ableton Live 10 and Ableton Live 11. Now, overall, the user interface looks pretty much identical. All that's really changed is the color scheme. If you take a look at Live 11, the colors have changed ever so slightly to Ableton Live 10. However, Ableton Live 11 feels so much smoother and more snappy in terms of how responsive it is when you're moving the mouse. It feels so much better compared to Ableton Live 10. Now we do have some new and improved CPU monitoring in the top right corner. Now this new CPU monitoring gives us two options for both the current CPU usage and also the average CPU usage across our entire project, just so you know if you are overloading the processing power on your actual system. Now, something that's a major change is the new scenes in Ableton Live 11. Now, obviously in Ableton Live 10, we had the ability to rename a scene. We could also dictate what tempo that scene ran at and also the time signature by writing those values in brackets in the actual scene launch. Ableton Live 11, we have it in a much nicer layout. You can rename the actual scene. Then you have a specific box to dictate the tempo of the scene and then also a box to dictate the actual time signature, which is much tidier. Something about it looks way nicer, easier to set up and much cleaner. Now, a major new feature inside of Ableton Live 11 for me personally is now the ability to comp audio tracks and also linked track editing. This is very similar to take folders inside of Logic Pro X, where you would basically just continuously record a take and all of those different audio files would compile into a single track where you could then chop out and comp the best bits to get a perfect take for your studio performance. This is brilliant. Now, unless you were a one take master using Ableton Live 10, your live projects probably looked something like this. Multiple duplicates of the exact same track, adding to your CPU load. You had multiple cases of the exact same compressors, EQs, maybe even effects loaded in, just so you could do continuous takes of a single section to capture the perfect performance. Now, there are some new and improved Ableton sound packs inside of Live 11. And very interestingly, we're getting some sound packs from Spitfire Audio, which make incredible plugins if you've ever heard of those. Interestingly, Ableton Live 11 has a much greater system requirements than Ableton Live 10. On both Mac OS and Windows 10, you now require eight gigabytes of RAM recommended, whereas on Ableton Live 10, you could get away with four gigabytes recommended. So you may need to upgrade your computer to get the most out of Ableton Live 11. Now, something that I was hoping for was an increase in CPU optimization with Ableton Live 11. Now, I took a cover track that I did here on the channel recently, which was Is This Love by Whitesnake that you can go and check out. Now, I recorded that track inside of Ableton Live 10. And the cool thing about Ableton Live 11 is all of your projects are compatible straight away. I just booted Ableton Live 11 up. It had all of my preferences transferred over from Live 10 and all of my projects just seamlessly booted up without any compatibility issues. So I took that exact project and I tested the most CPU intensive section to see if Ableton Live 11 could handle it slightly better. Now on average, my Ableton Live 10 project was getting 75% CPU usage in this particular section. And my Ableton Live 11 was getting around 73% CPU usage. So it's a slight improvement, but this is also the beta version. So we don't know whether this will be improved in the final release, but I was a bit disappointed. I was hoping at least maybe a 10% CPU improvement in terms of optimization would have been something that would have been pretty cool. Now, a final feature that's definitely worth mentioning inside of Live 11 is the new Tempo Follow. Now, obviously in previous versions of Ableton, we have had the ability to 
sync Ableton's tempo in a variety of different ways. We could sync Ableton to an external MIDI device, or we could sync the external MIDI devices to Ableton's BPM and create quite a comprehensive setup. However, for a lot of people, they don't really like setting up MIDI, and also they don't like performing to an onboard click track. Whereas with the new tempo follow feature, you could set up a microphone on your drummer's drum kit, for example, and that will dictate what the tempo is running inside of Ableton Live. So this means if you're a band that wants a pretty plug and play setup, you can just flow at your natural tempo without using a click track, but Ableton will follow along to that tempo. So that means things like your vocal effects, any other processing you're doing inside of your live project will be in sync with the live tempo of the band without having to use MIDI, not having to use click tracks, just organically playing in a much more natural fashion. Pretty cool feature, and from my testing, it was pretty accurate to my surprise. So let's close out today's video and answer the question, is it worth upgrading to Ableton Live 11? Now for me personally, I am going to upgrade for one feature and one feature only. That is the comp tracks. Seriously, now having the ability to t do multiple takes within a single audio track, very similar to the take folders in Logic Pro X that I'm familiar with, is going to save me so much time. And also I think the performance within my studio tracks will be better because inside of Ableton Live 10, I always felt a little bit rushed when delivering my vocal performances or whatever it may be because I really hated having to duplicate the same track multiple times. Like it was a really frustrating workflow and it added all of the extra load on the CPU of my computer. So for that reason, I am going to upgrade to Ableton Live 11 because it's just going to make my workflow so much faster. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and keep a lookout on my official course platform link in the video description for my Ableton Live 11 Basics course, which will be launching very, very soon. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.